All right, my friends, let's take a look at 2017 problem three. Um, so they give you a graph that says it's the graph of f prime. And uh, in the introduction, it says the function f is differentiable in the closed interval uh, from negative six to five and satisfies f of negative two equaling seven. We will use this little fact quite a bit. Um, the graph of f prime, the derivative of f consists of a semicircle and three line segments as shown in the figure above. Um, the mentioning of semicircle and three line segments is giving us a green light to use some basic geometry to find areas of uh, bounded regions. Um, <clears throat> for part A, it says find the values of f of negative 6 and f of 5. Um, so just to comment on this, this is a move that they will likely have you display at some point on your test, um, even if it's a 45-minute online shortened test. Um, I, uh, if I was a betting person, I would bet quite a bit that they would ask you to demonstrate knowledge of the fundamental theorem of calculus um, on this test. So prepare to, I would say, use this move at some point. Um, anyway, uh, so let's think about this. So what is it we want? You know, we want f of negative 6 and f of 5. No, you don't really have to write this unless you find it helpful. Um, what do we have? Let's think about this. Um, we have that f of negative 2 is 7, and then we also have um, information about f prime of x, okay? Um, so let's think. Okay, we have anything we kind of want to know about f prime, um, and we want to have information about f. So we're going to take the integral of f prime, and I'm going to use bounds. Um, to uh, use, the, use this initial condition that they gave me and to get um, my values over here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to, like let's say I'm trying to find f of negative six. <clears throat> I would do the integral from negative six to negative two of f prime of x dx. And then I would just interpret that using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So um, antiderivative of f prime is f, you have bounds, so let's not worry about the plus c. So this would be f, of negative 2 minus f of negative 6. Um, and then for this integral right here, that's what we could use the picture for. And we're just going to use a relationship between area and integrals. And so from negative 6 to negative 2, we would just be finding the area of that region um, bounded between the graph of f prime and the x-axis from um, negative 6 to 2. It's a triangle. It's a 4 by 2. So I'm just going to do 1 half base times height and I'm going to get 4. Um, so this left side over here is equal to 4. And it is positive 4 because it's above the x-axis. Um, f of negative 2 was given to us as an initial condition. That's 7. And I want to solve for f of negative 6. So a little algebra 1 or by inspection, 7 minus what is 4. So f of negative 6 would have to be 3. Okay, um, similarly, <clears throat> let's look at um, using the same kind of move to get f of 5. So I would do the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx, and that would be f of 5 take away f of negative 2. Um, we're going to use uh, area, the relationship between area and integrals, to evaluate the integral on the left side. So from negative 2 to 5, that would be like going from negative two to two and then adding in the value that you get from two to five. So um, doing a little area equals one half pi r squared type stuff. The radius here is two. So we'd end up with um, so half of four pi is two pi. So uh, the value of this piece down here would be negative 2 pi. Um, here, I'll just put a note there. So this is negative 2 pi because it's underneath the x-axis and you're adding up all negative y coordinates. Um, and then over here, it's just a little triangle. It's a 3 by 2, so the area here would be 3. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at that. So on the left side, um, you would end up with uh, negative 2 pi plus 3. On the right side, we have, we're finding f of 5. And remember the f of negative 2 was 7. That was given as the initial condition. Add the 7 over, and we'll find the f of 5 
is equal to 10 minus 2 pi, like so. Okay, all right, my friends. Um, let's look at uh, part B then. Let's see, it says, on what intervals is F increasing? Justify your answer. Um, boy, oh boy, if the only reason you asked me about this question was for part B, you're about to be super disappointed. Um, so uh, anyway, just wanted to give that disclaimer real quick. Um, let's see, what does it say? Okay, um, so on what intervals is F increasing? Justify your answer. So I do my justifications first. So F is increasing. Let's just think graphically for a second. You've got the graph of F. When is it going up as you go to the right? Um, and so that would be when the derivative of F is positive. <clears throat> okay, so let's think about this. If you're looking for when F prime is positive and this is the graph of F prime, you're looking for intervals where the y coordinates on the graph of f, f prime are positive. So that would be, um, so that is, I'll just say this is, how about that? When, I'll just say this is, sorry, for all x values from and this is the part where you're gonna be a little disappointed, especially if you've checked the scoring guidelines already. Um, I would say from, <clears throat> I don't include negative six, and I know that the, um, that the scoring guidelines did, but I'm here to tell you they're wrong. Anyway, um, so from negative six to, um, and then I would stop at negative two, um, and I would not include negative two. And the scoring guidelines did include negative two, and I'm here to tell you they're very wrong. Anyway, um, in union with, um, and then F prime is positive again uh, from two to five, not including two or five. There we go. Um, if you look at the scoring guidelines, they have all hard brackets where I have soft brackets in my answer. Um, I'm gonna stick to my answer um, and not change it. And feel free to Google, you know, something like, um, uh, you know, uh, when it, like a graph uh, or definition of increasing um, <clears throat> at an endpoint or something fun like that. And you'll see the math community um, having a big nerdy math fight over it. Um, anyway, um, so this is where I stand on this side, and so and I'm not moving. Um, anyway, I don't care if the scoring guidelines are different. Um, so part C. <clears throat> okay. Um, part C says, find uh, the absolute minimum value of F on the closed interval from negative 6 to 5. Justify your answer. Um, so I'll start with my justification first. So what I, my plan, my grand plan is to look for, first of all, where do, where do relative minimums potentially happen? Um, and then once I have my little list of X values, then I'm gonna compare all their Y values and pick out the very lowest one. Um, so here we go. So a relative, let's see, am I on the screen here? A relative minimum value on the graph of F. will occur when, okay, and here's what I'm thinking, you know, you've got the graph of F, doo -doo -doo, I don't know, whatever. Um, so when do relative minimums occur, you know? It would be when F prime, so if this is the graph of F, it would be when F prime changes from negative to positive. Except for potentially also at endpoints, you wouldn't have to have the derivative changing in that way at endpoints. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say when F prime changes from negative to positive, that does not work as well, all right. Um, negative to positive, positive and then possibly 
at any point. Thus, I like math transitional words, thus, hence, therefore. All right, if you don't like them, don't use them. All right, we consider the following x values. I know, and it's weird, because we, like, who's we, right? Um, but that's how math people talk. And that way, if I'm wrong, I get to blame the other people who were involved. All right, uh, anyway, um, so let's look at which x values we're going to consider. So we're going to consider x equaling um, both endpoints. You're going to see me list negative 6, and you're going to see me list 5. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just list negative 6 first. And then um, I'm going to look for places where f prime, which, so this is the graph of f prime, so I'm looking for its y coordinates to change from negative to positive. So um, here's a place where f prime is zero, but on the left, f prime is positive and negative, so we're not looking for that. We're looking for this one where f prime changes from negative to positive here. So I'm going to list positive two as a candidate, and then five just because it's the other endpoint. <clears throat> okay, um, so now we <laughs> compare their function values or their y coordinates. Okay, so uh, fortunately we figured out, we already know the um, function value at negative six. We found that in part A. So f of negative six is three. Um, we also found f of 5, um, f of 5 was 10 minus 2 pi, and so really the only um, new y coordinate for us to look at is f of 2, so <clears throat> um, to do that I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus again. So, um, so I'm going to use the integral from negative 2 to 2. I always go back to the, if I can, I always go back to the initial condition they gave me, that way if I messed something up I'm not using, um, you know, incorrect information. Um, so interpreting this, this would be f of 2 minus f of negative 2. Um, using the graph, um, so we would just be going from negative 2 to 2, so that would just be the value of the integral for this half circle piece, which was negative 2 pi. f of 2 is what we're finding, f of negative 2 was 7, let's add the 7 over, so f of 2 is would be 7 minus 2 pi. So let's compare these values, we've got 3, we have 10 take away about 6.28, so this would be a little, this would be bigger than 3, so 3 is smaller than um, 10 minus 2 pi, um, but then this one, 7 minus approximately 6.28, um, this would be less than the 3. Um, so my conclusion would be, therefore, the absolute minimum value is, and you could say f of 2, you could say 7 minus 2 pi, um, if you're really paranoid, like me, you might say f of 2, which is 7 minus 2 pi. Um, I don't know. My cousin has uh, always says, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, anyway, probably because he's paranoid. Okay, um, let's see. Let's look at part D. Uh, for each of f double prime of negative 5 and f double prime of 3, find the value or explain why it does not exist. Um, <clears throat> so let's think about f double prime. If this is the graph of f, what does f double prime tell you? Um, so f double prime is the derivative of f prime. So since this is the graph of f prime, f double prime would be the slope of its tangent line, it being f prime. Okay. Um, so there's my explanation again. Um, I'm just going to explain up front. So I'm just going to say f double prime of negative 5 is the slope <clears throat> of the tangent line to the graph of f prime at x equaling negative 5.
Um, therefore, f double prime of negative five will be, okay, so let's look at the picture. Here's negative five. Um, a, a line is its own tangent line, so really you just need to know what's the slope of this line right here. Um, the line goes down two when it goes to the right four, so the slope here would be negative one half or negative two over four, uh, whatever you want to call that. Um, but f double prime of negative five would be negative one half. Um, and then, so that I don't have to just say this exact sentence over again, just replacing the negative five with a three, I think I'll just say similarly, similarly, um, <clears throat> f double prime of three. And so let's look at, um, Three. So here's, you know, you have this corner in the graph um, and you can see that the um, slope of the tangent line coming at for you from the left is some positive value and the slope coming at you uh, when you come at it from the right is some negative value. So remember that a derivative was a double sided limit. So if your left sided derivative doesn't match your right sided derivative, that means that your derivative at that number does not exist. And there are a couple of ways to say that. So you could say f double prime of three does not exist. Um, and then there are different ways for you to explain yourself. You could say because, um, because, um, and then I'm just gonna give a couple options, okay? So you could say, because the graph of f prime has a corner at x equals three. This is not my favorite way to explain that. Um, <clears throat> the way I would explain it is I would say because f double prime of three coming from the left is not the same as f double prime of three coming from the right. That's personally how I would say that. But then if you look at the scoring guidelines, they say the equivalent of what I'm saying here, but they say it in kind of a more mm, textbook educated way, to be honest with you. Um, so here's the way that they say exactly what I just said there, and I just wanna make sure that you're okay with what they're saying. So basically, um, f double prime is the slope of the tangent line to f prime. And if you remember the definition, so I'll just say recall, this isn't something that you'd wanna write. Recall f prime at a value was equal to the limit as x approached that value of f of x minus f of that value over x minus that value. And it's a double-sided limit. So this x value could have been a little to the right of three or a little to the left of three. Um, so if you're looking at like, um, but so, oh, sorry. Um, also, we're looking at f double prime of three, so these would have primes on them, sorry. And then if you're looking at f double prime of three from the left, um, that would be exactly this expression, but your x value would be approaching three from the left. And so the only difference between double-sided derivative and a left-sided derivative is they would say the limit is x approaches three from the left. Okay, so this expression is what is how the people who wrote the scoring guidelines is how they said your uh, derivative of f prime coming at three from the left. So they said the limit as x approaches three is f prime of x minus f prime of three over x minus three is not equal to, and the way they said f double prime of three from the right is they said the limit as x approaches three from the right of f prime of x minus f prime of three all over x minus three. I believe all three explanations would um, earn the same credit, but since I've never been part of the actual grading process, I'm not totally sure. Um, but uh, the one at the bottom is what the scoring guideline said. If that makes sense to you, then uh, maybe use that. 
if uh, one of the if this does not make sense to you at all then I would aim for one of the other ones that does feel more comfortable all right my friends I hope this is helpful and I hope you're doing great take care everybody